All right, so next we're going to try to sketch a few of these quadratic surfaces. And before we do that, I realize I, I forgot. There is one more type of quadratic surface, which is the, the cone. Um, and a cone is, is an, an elliptic cone or a circular cone. Um, and it, uh, it's sort of, the cone is, is sort of the, you know, the, there's this family of hyperboloids that you get. You can kind of play around with the equation for a hyperboloid and you can, you know, replace the, the one, you know, if you have, say, a minus sign here, you can replace the one by some parameter. And as it shrinks down to zero and then becomes negative, um, you will see that, you know, this will kind of get more and more pinched until there's a point right at, you know, when you're at something like, say, uh, z squared is, say, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared, something like that, where it sort of pinches to a point and you get this shape that looks something like this, right? It kind of crosses and there's this point of intersection in the middle. Um, so you get this cone shape, right? And then, and then if you kind of, so you can think about this kind of pinches down until it gets to there. And then if you start letting that parameter run into the negative, it separates out this way and you move on to the hyperboloids of two sheets. Um, and with a bit of software, you can play around, you can actually animate that and it's kind of a cool thing to see. All right. Let's think about sketching these. How do we how do we draw? So let's do this one first. Okay. Now um, it helps if you can recognize what sort of object you're you're dealing with. This one here is going to be an elliptic paraboloid, uh, and it's going to be opening in the y direction. So one of the things that you might notice right away is that y can't be negative, right? Um, because the right hand side here has to always be bigger than or equal to zero. Um, and if you set y equal to a positive constant, well, then you've got an ellipse, right? And, and so you can sort of think about, well, if x and z are both 0, y is 0, so the origin is a point, right? And if you think about, you know, at, at say, y equals 1, what if you had at y equals 1? Well, you would have sort of a standard form for an ellipse. Uh, x squared over 4, right? So you can go 1, sort of 2, either way in the x direction, z squared over 16, so, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, right, 16 is 4 squared. And you try to kind of, and again, I'm, I'm being more accurate than I maybe should try to be because otherwise things do get kind of messy, but you can try to sort of work in that ellipse like so, right? And, and if you go further out, like you go twice as far out, you're just going to get the same thing but scaled larger, right? Um, whereas if you were to, let's say, set, um, let's set x equal to 0, right? If I put x equal to 0, right, and look at what, what do I have in the yz plane, well, I would have y equals z squared over 16. That's a parabola. It's a fairly wide parabola because of the 16 on the bottom, right, the scale factor. So I, I have a parabola opening like so, right? And, and just those, those two values there, I should really kind of keep going down like that, right? Um, those two curves, that ellipse that's in the plane y equals 1, and then this parabola that's in the plane x equals 0, right? that, that's enough to give you an idea of what, of what this thing looks like, right? Um, and it's hard in these kind of drawings by hand to really get the sort of the elliptical nature of those cross sections. That's really hard to convey by hand. Better done, again, by software, especially because then you can rotate things around. You can look at it from different angles and, and see what you're dealing with, right? Now, coming over to this one, it helps if you recognize this is an ellipsoid, right? It, it fits that pattern that we have over there. And so, the trick for drawing an ellipsoid is very much like drawing an ellipse where you, you look at the values here and you say, okay, well, um, in the x direction, you know, the, it's x squared over, over, over 1 squared, if you like. So I can go one unit either way in the x direction, 
right? Uh, I can go one, two, three units either way in the y direction, and I can go uh, two units in the z direction, right? Now, the easy ellipse to draw here is the x equals zero ellipse in the yz plane, right? So we so draw that one in, right? The next one is, is probably, I don't know, we can set, say, um, y equal to zero, the ellipse in the xz plane is gonna pass through there and there, right? So, so, coming back up. And then we have the ellipse in the xy plane passing through, um, let's say there, going around, like so, right? So the ellipsoid, I, th I think of the various quadric surfaces, I think the ellipsoid is possibly the easiest one to draw. This one, this is gonna be a hyperbolic, or, a, um, or yeah, hyperbolic paraboloid. Um, and I'm happy to admit that I find these by far the hardest ones to draw. Um, in the yz plane, if x is equal to zero, notice that we, one of the curves that we get is simply z equals y squared. Um, so this is one curve that we should have, right? Uh, on the other hand, if y equals zero in the xz plane, I have this kind of parabola opening downwards, and you're like, well, how the heck am I gonna square those, right? How do I make those work? And if, if I allow different values of x, you can kind of see that these these parabolas, they kind of fall down that one there. And, and now you gotta fit that all together. You're like, how, how am I, it's, it's, really, it's really hard to kind of get a sensible result on these, I find. Um, one thing that might help is to think about, okay, if z is say one or minus one, you can, you can sketch the, the hyperbolas that you get. All right, so at z equals one, y squared minus x squared, and again, these are kind of tricky to draw. Um, at z equals one, you'd have a hyperbola opening kind of like this way. z equals minus one, you have a hyperbola opening. That, you know, okay, like, no, this, how do I put that together into a reasonable surface? Right? It looks, this looks like nonsense at this point. Um, and, yeah, so I don't, I don't have great advice for you on how to actually draw this and make it look nice, other than to kind of have in mind, oh yeah, look, it's a saddle shape, it's like a Pringles chip, right? And you, you kind of think about what, what, what should the end result look like? Um, and you can play around with that and try to use that to get something reasonable. And so you can say, okay, well, I guess I have, you know, starting over again, put it down here. You might still start with, with this initial shape there to get things started. Uh, but then you might, rather than trying to draw that parabola opening down there, you might kind of draw one opening down here. Like so. Now it's starting to look a little bit better, right? Uh, and then you can, and then you can try to kind of connect things up using the the hyperbola part. Right? Something like that, and you can start to get something that more reasonably reflects that shape. But it's it's really it's really a difficult one, I think, to draw accurately. Um, Fortunately, it's not art class, so as long as you get something reasonable, we're, we're probably happy with it, right? Um, and, you know, it's, it's sometimes entertaining to look at people's badly butchered drawings of these surfaces because some of them are legitimately hard to draw, and that's okay. Um, we have computers for a reason. <laughs>